we are here with IFBB Pro Classic Physique Henry. Henry, how are you? How are you guys? Nice to meet you. Everything go? Good, good. Good to see you. So you're based out of Montreal? Yes, yes, out of Montreal, real city. <laughs> yeah. How is it out in Montreal? Uh, right now, I mean, you know, as you know, you guys are based in Vancouver, I believe. So uh, you don't have the cold weather that we have here, but yeah. it's getting cold. The winter's coming. Nice. We just came back up for the Olympia. The summer season was really cool, but uh, it's a little chilly down here in Montreal right now. Nice, nice. So you just came off of, for people that don't know, you just went into the Olympia. You came off with fourth place. A lot of people are talking. The industry's talking. It's probably the biggest thing that's happened in the industry. How does it feel? Uh, it's an incredible feeling. I mean, you know, uh, I prepped so hard for this, uh, this well, actually this show. But let me just maybe a bit before put you up to uh, what was the first objective was just to participate in a classic physique. For people that don't know the uh, difference between classic physique and bodybuilding, the classic physique or uh, a new division that came in two years ago, uh, which is... Um, more about a more about a mainstream look type of physique. So uh, for people that don't know, there's a weight limit per height. You know? So my weight limit uh, was 240 pounds, which wasn't too far from my con my uh, weight uh, my weight uh, stage on the bodybuilding scene uh, in the open. So um, uh, yeah, so for me, uh, doing to classic was just just to do good, and first of all. It was also to uh, try to get uh, the weight good also as well, you know. So, uh, and the uh, transition was kind of hard because uh, my off-season weight was pretty high. I was in about like a 280, 270. And then we had to cut it up to 240 for the stage. Wow. So, the prep was really, really crazy. I mean, two hours cardio a day, uh, strict dieting. Uh, it was pretty difficult. So, I, I did my first show in Vancouver. Actually, you guys are uh, placed out there. I uh, placed fourth. And then uh, we were up three weeks after to Tampa Pro, and Tampa, I, I won the show in Tampa Pro. So that was for me a, a big accomplishment that I did this year. And going from there, winning the Tampa Pro, I earned my uh, qualification for Mr. Olympia. Wow, wow, wow. So you've had quite the run. So are you going to pursue the physique and bodybuilding, or are you just going to stick to the physique? This is actually the big question for me right now. Because, uh, well, I mean, you know, going to the Olympia, um, there's always a little fluctuation in my height. And this is what causing me a bit of a trouble competing in the classic. Because the more shredded you get, the more uh, fat you burn. And for people that don't know, you have a little uh, solo fat under your feet. And also, when you get really, really, really uh, shredded, when you have no more fat in your body, almost. Well, you, you're, you're getting shorter, no? So I was so so dry, so ripped at the Olympia weigh in that I, I, I my height went under six one. Mm. <laughs> that was a big problem for me, yeah, because at six one and less, I'm supposed to weigh two hundred thirty pounds, no more two hundred forty pounds. So thank God we planned it a bit. Uh, I suffered a lot. I had to lose two and a half pounds in twenty five minutes. At the way in, which is uh, a big task for people who want to try to do this, I challenge you: two two and a half pounds in twenty five minutes. Okay, I won't oh, tell you the trick, but <laughs> whatever you want to do, try to do it. Whoa. Um. So yeah, so I did it. I did. Yeah, I did the weight. I was finally weighing in at the two hundred and thirty pounds. So for me, it was a it's a weight that I wouldn't expect to be at any time in my career so far as a pro. And uh, finally, I did it. I competed and I finished fourth, and for me it was uh it was, it was huge. I mean, you know, uh, first year in Olympia, uh, first Cala, fourth place, the big night show. Uh, it was literally a dream coming uh, coming true for me. Wow, wow. So, what are you taking some time off before you hit another show? I mean, tell us about your schedule, what that looks like. Yeah, usually uh, I'm I'm someone who's really about you know um, the needs and someone who's really uh, who pursued a lot of philosophy just I mean listen to your body mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you know you feel that you need to get some rest if you you feel that you need to uh, put the body that aside for a little while and get better and then you know just just to uh, revalue yourself and just to enjoy a good time and enjoying life with your, uh, your loved ones this is what you should do so in my book me personally, what I do, I usually compete around from January. I'm starting to get ready till September, 
and I usually take two, three months off. So for me right now, we're in uh, well, we're mid-October right now. Uh, I'm going to be probably going to be off till the month of January, and then I'm going to start back prepping for the show in January, and uh, I'm planning to do shows around month of May, June, and then, uh, of course, going back to the Olympia. I could just go, just do the Olympia, because I got qualified for it, being in the top four uh, of the competition. But for me, I love to compete. Uh, and for me, being a competitor, it's not about just doing one show a year. I usually do two to three to four shows um, every year. So that will be uh same thing for next year. I'm going to get some good rest right now, uh, take things from off-season, and then uh, I'm getting ready month of uh january probably first show would be i would love to uh maybe like i said i don't want to make it official but we're talking about maybe new york pro in may wow wow so so right now you're taking some time off you're going to come back and what's what's the body what what are you feeling like how how's the mind are you in like tell us a little bit about that have you taken a little bit you know has it taken a toll on you uh this year especially yes terribly i would say uh like i was talking about before um, my preparation for the first show was, was so hard so demanding uh going to the gym on an empty stomach i was doing an hour cardio mm. and then getting my first meal in uh doing my couple of first client and then 11 30 noon i have a second meal and then after my second meal i was doing my regular workout for an hour my weight workout mm. uh then this and then i had my, my shake and then after that two three meals and before my last meal at night, I was doing another hour of cardio. You know? wow. So, and, and that was, and I did that stretch, that schedule for a good, I would say, a good month and a half, two months. Uh, wow. That was very demanding for my body. I never, I'm the type of guy who's usually doing an hour cardio max per day, mm. if needed, and then uh, doing that that uh, that special uh, that, that special uh, workout for more than a month. Uh, was really demanding on body, and I felt it, you know, mm. going to my first show. And after that, it was to maintain that weight. So the diet, the calories were really low all year round, and my body suffered for it. It suffered so much that if you, <laughs> if you would believe me, um, because most of the people don't believe me when I say that, um, I gained in 10 days after the Olympia, just not, not abusing a food, just eating, like, you know, a regular off-season diet we're talking about you know maybe four to five uh four to five thousand calories a day i jump up to 290 pounds in 10 days you remember i told you 230 230 versus 290 we're at 60 pounds extra in wow. 10 days so you know it's uh my body really really needed to the, that uh, agitation that the, those carbs and it, uh, it really sucked it in all in and uh, that's a sign that you know you need to uh, give your body what it needs, give it some rest. And when I'm saying giving some rest, I'm not saying about I'm talking about not training. I'm just talking about you know um, uh, not abusing of the diet. Give your body what it needs. Train regularly. Uh, sleep, eat, train, but you know no no abuse and no force of your body. Just you know uh, trying to relax. And uh, also, like I said, uh, for your mind, you were talking about the state of mind. Uh, at that point, when we're we're dieting for a show. You were stressed. Uh, you know, we're very nervous. Uh, you, you don't even know if you're going to win. You don't know if you're going to make the weight being in a classic physique. So relax your mind as well. Enjoy life. And uh, this is, for me, the most important thing right now. How do you how do you get yourself to perform? Like when you don't want – like your mind is going a million miles a minute. You're tired. You're exhausted. Do you have any tips for the people that are watching this that are probably saying like, oh, you know, Henry, what do I do? How do how do you perform, Henry? How do you get yourself to wind down, to relax, or to, to, to you know, when you don't want to go do that cardio? What do you do? I, am, I think to perform well, as much as bodybuilding, as, as anything else in life, you need to find a source of motivation. And my source of motivation is always to see where I'm coming from. To where I'm going, mm. all right. So for people that want a little tip, think about something that you're gonna earn in the future. Think about something that you drink all your life. Think about something that you know for so many years you want to go get. So so many years you want to go buy, and then keep that objective in mind. And each minute, each second of your day, when you're saying, "Oh, I don't want to do this. I can do it." Remember that thought. What do I really want? Why do I? Why do I really do this? Me, myself, this year was 
Olympia. I'm switching to Classic for, for good reason. I think I can go get the Olympia, I can go to place. So I had that in mind. So I was thinking, age, it also at one, at one point, believe it or not, uh, I was each steps I was doing on Sir Master at night. I was really saying I was doing this because I want to be first. I'm doing this because I want to be Brian. I'm doing this because I want to be Bumstead. I'm doing this because I want to be the best. I'm doing this because I want to be the most shredded guy on stage. And at that point, when you have that motivation and you have that in your mind, nothing can stop you going to get your real goal. So I perform each time giving myself goals like that. What's the what's the strategy in terms of you doing shows and not just doing the Olympia? I mean, you know, if I'm your coach, you know, and I'm in your corner, why, why do these shows? What's the goal? What's the, give, give us the game plan. Well, it's, it's, a, good, it's a very good question, actually, that uh, there's two sides a bit to that, uh, to the answer as well. Because you could, I, uh, I'm going to go with the first, uh, the first side, which would be not the easiest, but which would be also one logical one, just to go with the Olympia. So let's say uh, we're not doing any shows, we're just focusing on the Olympia. I'm the type of guy who's who needs a little warm up before. I need to put myself in in the mood, in the beat of competing. Just doing one show for me will be too much of a do or die for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying uh, I don't think it will be the good strategy for me to do that because I love I love to compete and I love to be you know um, in the beat in the rhythm also of you know the the season the competition. So for me, doing just at the Olympia show would it be right for my mind and my preparation, you know, mm-hmm. personally. Now, um, doing other shows, why? Um, also, as you know, you know, bodybuilding, there's a lot to do with the physique. There's a lot to do with your straight preparation, your straight uh, showing on stage. But also, there's a lot of uh, political, um, you know, movement behind that. You know, you, you present yourself as the bodybuilder. But who's this guy in the field of the bodybuilding? Who's this guy for the image of bodybuilding, you know? Mm-hmm. And this is where I think and I believe um, that as a bodybuilder, you need to have both sides. Not only the stage, not only being the best and get out of there, grab your money and go. You need to be a great ambassador, uh, ambassador for the sports. And at that point, for me, uh, just to do one show going back there wouldn't be right for me. Mm-hmm. So by doing shows two, three shows before, I keep showing people that, you know, I do this because I love the sport. I do this because um, I don't need just to pretend that I'm an Olympian because we're all competitors, you know. The guy that finished last in the Olympia is as good as me. Why I'm fourth, why he's last? Because, you know, at the end, there's something he didn't need did wrong that I did right, you know. It could be a really short, 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 uh, short term twitch that you, that you missed. And then, boom, everything changes, you know. So that can also happen if you decide just to go to Olympia and you just, you just try to do something new. Speaking of that, also doing a lot of shows allows you to, to try new new strategy, to try um, new ways of carving up, to try new new things of the workout, you know, to improve also. So for me, I need to do more shows. I need to show myself. I need to show my presence in the field and make also um, make also a stage presence that will be here. For, for here, for now, for the next year, and the year after, all year round, not only one show. So it's important for, for me to be around and to show the, that I love bodybuilding for the right reason. Well, you definitely are an amazing ambassador. I mean, working with you over the years, I mean, you live and die and breathe this sport. I mean, if there's nobody in this industry, and I sincerely mean that, who is more passionate about the sport, and you know, you're an amazing role model. Like, honestly, like the amount of posts and you know you always go in the extra mile for the brand and we really appreciate that i wanted to talk to you though about your diet you know the way you package that you brought what are you looking to improve at this next show like what are you what are you hoping to really change up you know going forward uh actually it's uh well it's always been one of my uh one of my weak points but um, physically, uh, I want to improve a lot of my lower body. I want to improve a bit over my legs, my legs development. It's, they're getting really good. I mean, if I look back at the, the pictures and the videos, I've seen that, you know, my separation and then my lower body, especially my rear, my knees, uh, butt and all that, very, very um, uh, defined. I have nothing to say about that conditioning-wise. But size-wise and insert- insertion-wise, 
and also about the density of the muscles. I want to go get something that, you know, um, that's it's, it's something that nobody's seen so far on stage in a classic physique division. Because, uh, you know, I used to compete in the open. In the open, I mean, you know, see guys, for example, <laughs> not anybody, but Sean Roden just won the Olympia this year. Uh, it's, it's funny because we have the same coach, Chris Aceto. And all week, well, all from Tuesday till the show at the Olympia in Las Vegas, we're all together posing for Chris. And uh, Sean used to pose after me, and I was always uh, <laughs> astonished and blown away by the quality of the squads and uh, the insertion and the waves and the way that the density was, was coming in. So for me, this year, it's really about improving that first uh, bit of my lower body conditioning with maintaining the same conditioning at the end, you know, uh, physically, training-wise. Uh, Nutrition-wise, um, I think we did a good job. Like I said, I'm working with uh, Chris Cito for my food, and uh, we're doing a great job. I give him, uh, you know, uh, all my trust when it comes to dieting, when it comes to uh, uh, actually um, s trying new things. Uh, Chris is very conservative when it comes to dieting, so we're not doing drastic changes in the diet. Whatever works, works for the past three years. So we're still going to go with the same run food-wise. Uh, but I think this year we're going to try, and like I said, the important of doing other shows also uh, to make sure that you're going to get your best at DLM if you're trying other stuff in the previous uh contest is to carbon up a bit more i think in my eyes in my opinion switching also from uh open to classic i find myself a bit too um too thin and a bit too um uh, not too flat but a bit too small when i see myself on stage so we're going to try and maybe work that out with you know carbon up a bit more at the end and their early shows and we see how it's going to go but for the rest it's uh it's mostly going to be the same for the food but physically wise, like I said, the uh, lower body, I'm going to give myself a big, big, big uh, improvement uh, training this winter with my legs. What, what supplements are you using, you know, when you're bulking, when you're cutting? Just give us a little insight on that. Okay. Well, actually, it's, it's cool that you're talking about this because they're all here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, um, well, first of all, what I really liked when I was in prep, I really liked to do a little combination in the morning. I have the... Vitabolic, my nutribolics every 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 morning. I have my mm. seven caps at uh, my meal one, and that really 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 changed a lot of things for me. Uh, it gave me a lot of uh, energy, and also so I felt a big a big change also in my mood all day. Before I used to be a bit more sluggish, and if I was waking up, coming to the gym, since so I switched to vitabolic, I have more energy, and uh, I really like that, and that was really really helpful. Um, towards the end of my prep, when you're really down, the calories were low. I really like to combine that with um, my Semtex here, also the fine burning that we have. Mm. Okay, so these two were one of the most uh, the most used tag that I did in my prep uh, mm. going to the Olympia. Uh, I also every workout that that's for me it's a, it's a it's a must, especially when I'm you know lowering down my calories, uh, especially my carbs. Supernova by Nitro. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody knows that pre-workout now. It's in, in Trem. Everybody loves it. Uh, the candy blast flavor is incredibly good. Um, we also have a grape uh, grape flavor that's good. Uh, these these were the main supplements that I used to uh, count on every day. Also, like you say, I always have the Hydro Pure for my protein shake. Um, I always use the anabolic state for the, the BCAs. This is every day. And this is also another thing you uh, put out because a lot are asking me about supplement, about stack, but they, they forget that this is the base. Mm. You know, it's mm. not only about that. You know, the food has to do a lot to do with that, the shape, your training as well. But every day, you need to have your basics, which means your BCAs while you train, anabolic state, your protein post workout, or even you know in your your day, iso pure. We have isobolic also with a blend. For people that want to shake maybe before before bed, uh, isobolics also a very very good uh, solution to that. And uh, yeah, and post workout also um, I love um, to combine that also with a little touch of anabolic state in my shake, give it a, this, this uh, delicious taste, and also while well, still the recovery and the repairs are uh, more amplified by that. Mm. So in season, this is my style. Nice. Off season, when I do off season, what I usually do pretty much the same thing. I usually put back with a syntax, mm. and uh, I really focus on my multivitamin, 
my supernova is still in, and I do my hydro pure uh, protein also as a shake. But uh, these three, and especially the the hydro pure for people that are looking for a very very uh, good quality blending, incredibly good protein. I strongly suggest to try them. Uh, my my fla- my favorite flavor for a uh, hydro pure is chocolate flavor. Nice, nice. Did you have anything that you wanted to talk about before we wrap up today, Henry? Is there anything you wanted to go over or ask us? Well, actually, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I want to uh, ask you a little, uh, maybe a little update, a little school, because I heard there's a, there's a little movement in Intravolix going on right now. And uh, I heard you guys are might coming up with something that's really popular, something that there are lots of people uh, want to hear, want to know, and want to taste, especially if you have anything uh, in hand. How about a little protein bar? Is it, is it going to come out? Or we got, what's we, going on we, we just came from a meeting, actually. We are coming out with a protein bar. It's looking like uh, just around New Year's release, around January-ish, you know, we're hoping for. It's going to taste amazing, okay? Protein and oats, high protein. It's like real food, and it is unbelievable. I've, we probably had 300 samples here. I'm not even joking you. Like, this has been going on for the last 18 months, and we are now at the point where, you know, we're ready to rock and roll. We're ready to rock and roll, and I think that, you know, the whole industry is going to be shaken up by this bar. Honest to God, like, it is groundbreaking, and the quality, and you know, you know, Gray, you know, Gray, Gray is so anal with the ingredients and the quality, and he's been manning this up with Rodney. The two of them have been on this for the last 18 months, so we're pretty excited. Come come January-ish, you know, we're going to drop the bar, and uh, it's going to be big. Yeah, I think people should be excited because, you know, Nutribolics having a protein bar is, is a big deal. So yeah, we're gonna drop I think about two flavors, maybe even three, you know, but I we haven't solidified the exact flavors yet, but we're 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 close because there's a lot of we've had a lot of different samples here, so we're narrowing it down based on feedback. Wow, well, I'm really, I'm really uh, great to hear about that because uh, it's a bit demand. A lot of people would ask me also about you know protein bar and all that. I heard from the source that it might come out, so I'm really glad uh, that you confirmed that. Also, uh, speaking of uh, Nutribolics, you came out also with a fantastic book, uh, The Barracuda. Yeah. You know, it was uh, kind of the history of your success. Also, uh, we had a super nice post of Rodney yesterday who was showing where uh, it all started. Also, uh, you know, you guys all started brainstorm the, the company and all that. And uh, actually, I want to either congratulate you and want to know when or if there's anything special for that 17th anniversary yes. of Mr. Bali this year. Is that right? Is it coming you soon? Know what? 16 year anniversary, actually. 16 years. 16, 16 okay. years. And we're going to be doing, a, we're going to be announcing, we're going to be giving away 16 prizes. We're going to be doing it on the live feed. And we wanted to kind of give back to some of the fans. So we're going to be announcing that any day now. And yeah, I mean, we we started in my parents' games room, for people who don't know that. That was the official Nutribolix HQ for the first two years, me and Rodney. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm getting ready to launch to, you know, to touch upon the Barracuda. The Barracuda book is coming out uh, 2019, trying to lock down a date. I got a few publishers interested in the book. So we're just seeing who kind of comes to the table with the best offer, you know. And then we're going to drop the Barracuda book and we're going to start hammering it home and you know, that's sort of 2019 is going to be a big year for us. Lots of stuff happening. Well, you see, that's all beneficial for us athletes and, uh, you know, uh, all the fans and people that are, you know, the, all the your family, the thing, you know, these are, this is the proof that uh, we're, in the, we're in the good the good, good both right now with all you guys. And I'm really, really glad to be part of that journey. Yeah. No, we're, we're, we're glad to have you, Henry. Hey, listen, thank you so much for joining us on Perform. We really appreciate it, man. My pleasure, my pleasure, Jason. If there's anything else, uh, I'm here, I'm free. All right. And if you guys have any inquiries about, uh, also a question about my training, my workout, my supplements, you can also reach me on my Instagram. I'm already here. I know the master class. I have UV Pro, always there for you guys. Perfect. Take care, man. Thanks a lot. Take care, Jay. Thank you. See you.